Welcome everyone. It is great to virtually see you. I'm so glad you've joined us today for a discussion with Corey on what to outsource and what to insource. So um, this is a question we get a lot. And uh, I was talking to Corey, um, we've known each other for a while and he's really, um, I think really mastered the balance of insourcing and outsourcing and how to leverage it to both perfect his marketing, but also grow his business, which I know is top of mind for everyone. Um, so let's go through quick introductions. I'm Susan Theater, and I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at FMG, and would love to connect with everyone um, and anyone that I'm not connected with. And um, we have Corey Hymanson, who um, I'm going to pause and let him introduce himself in one second. Um, thank you for joining us. And I think we are off and running. So if we go, what's the next slide, Amy? Yeah, let me just quickly go through the agenda. All right, so we're gonna do mostly talking. We will be doing um, a few slides and we'll also be showing parts of our platform. But just so you can follow along, first, uh, Corey's gonna introduce himself and talk a little bit about his business and his decisions of what to insource, outsource. Um, the marketing challenges that he was facing and goals for um, outsourcing. We'll do a quick overview of Do It For Me, um, the program uh, that Corey is taking advantage of at FMG. We'll talk about the importance of content marketing and what outsourcing has enabled Corey to do. Uh, and that'll be, and then we'll close. We are looking to try to get through this pretty quickly. You know, everybody's busy, so we will aim for about 30 to 40 minutes. And uh, we hope that you'll ask tons of questions and keep this lively. And uh, we look forward to um, sharing Corey's story. So without further ado, Corey, would you tell us a little bit about your business and what were the challenges, the marketing challenges that you were facing um, when you started thinking about outsourcing? Sure. Uh, thank you, Susan. I appreciate you uh, inviting me today. So hopefully I can bring some, some A-game stuff for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my name is Corey Hymanson. I'm from Rock Rapids, Iowa. This is my primary office location. I have a satellite location in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Uh, I have clients all over the country. We've been doing this. Uh, I started in 1999 uh, from scratch. So I've, I've kind of learned the right way and the wrong way to do a lot of things. And uh, mm -hmm. what I found is that independent advisors, uh, a lot of us are cut out of the same cloth that uh, we're not necessarily marketing people, you know, and, and it comes down to time. We all have a limited amount of time every day. Uh, we should be doing things that are productive. And so, yeah, marketing is important. Uh, you need to team up with the right people and try and take some of it off your plate so that you can focus on, on maybe the bigger dollar or the more interesting things in your world of, of dealing with clients. Absolutely. And when you were thinking about outsourcing, I mean, obviously one of your goals was freeing up time. What were some of the other things that you were hoping to accomplish? What was your, your dream checklist um, for an outsourced vendor or partner? Yeah, I, I think what I found is that when you try to create your own content and do everything yourself, pretty soon all your things look just like every other advisor's ads and things or or those magazines that we see and it's a couple holding hands walking on the beach i mean it's all the same <laughs> stuff and so in an industry where you uh and the next advisor if we all have the same product tools in the toolbox you got to separate yourself and, and i think that comes with creative content for your marketing whether you do it yourself but it's a lot easier to have to have other people's on the on the on the team with you, like an FMG, um, and yet being able to personalize it, work together to get to to things that you approve of. Exactly, um, and when you think about you know what your marketing objectives, um, you know most commonly we did a survey with WealthManagement.com, and sixty seven percent of advisors their top goal was engaging um, and driving retention engagement and share of wallet with existing customers and driving referrals. And secondarily, acquiring new customers was just slightly below that at about 64%. Would you concur with that? Yeah, I, you know, I think, I think we've all seen the statistics that um, 
clients don't generally leave an advisor because of performance or, or poor performance. Yeah. It's a lot of times they just feel like they're on an island and they're not getting the communication they feel they deserve because they understand or they should understand that markets go up and down and there's going to be bad years. But you have to communicate with clients. And we also know this too, that it's way more expensive to get a new client or a new client household than it is to keep a client household happy and maybe get greater share of wallet from them by earning their trust, you know, earning additional business down the road and just being that trusted partner. Um, so I, yeah, I totally agree with both of those statistics and I'm on board with that. Yeah, there was a wide chart study recently and um, it said that 90% of clients consider the frequency of their advisor's communications when deciding whether to refer. And um, a similar percent in the 90s um, indicated that they did not feel that their advisor communicated frequently enough, that it was, you know, they were hearing from them less than they would like to. And I think that just reinforces it sort of there's sometimes I hear from advisors that they're a little insecure about, well, I don't want to, you know, overwhelm my clients with a bunch of emails that's going to annoy them. And I, I, I beg to differ. I think the more that you're dripping on clients with valuable content, the more you're staying top of the mind, the more they're valuing you and feel valued, but also more likely they are to refer. Here's that slide I was talking about with, uh, the primary objectives. So let's go on to, so you contacted um, FMG, actually, I think you've been a client for a while, but what made you, um, what attracted you to the Do It For Me program? Maybe talk about the decision to um, choose that Do It For Me program that we offer. Well, I think the catchy title worked, right? Number one. Oh, thank <laughs> you. Hey, yeah, if, and, uh, if you think it's just going to be off your plate and gone, I mean, that, that certainly gets your attention, but I wanted I wanted it to be outsourced to a certain extent to make it easy for me to save me time, but I wanted the ability to kind of choose what pieces I would use. I didn't want it to be all or nothing because I know there's companies out there that you can, you know, subscribe to, but their content is the same for every subscriber. Um, and it doesn't even flow as if I wrote it or I said it, you know what I mean? Right. I, I think yeah. to, to deepen that relationship with that client or that prospect, you got to be real, you know, and you can't Absolutely. put out content that flows in, in sentences or uses words that I don't use in normal daily talking, or they know that I just bought it from somewhere else. And, and so personally, Absolutely. that's just my opinion on that, that, that I wanted freedom to choose what to use and when to use it and then have it scheduled and done for me. I love it. Amy, why don't we, um, if you could flip to the do it for me calendar, I think we'll flip ahead a little bit. Um, so maybe describe to everyone how the do it for me program works. This is an example of our August calendar, which you received a couple of weeks ago. Um, and maybe take them through your process, uh, and you know, what a do it for me advisor can expect from the program and how you use this calendar. Sure. Um, my office might be a little bit different than some because you know I have a fairly large staff. So I actually have a dedicated marketing employee on staff. And so yep. we take it, we take a two-step um, look at the calendar when it comes out like this. So my marketing person, you know, has a background in economics, but she is not an advisor. So we let her look through it first because I want to know what her mindset thinks of certain topics if she thinks it's a good fit. And then there's another advisor in our office. So either he or I then look at it as the second step for, from an advisor standpoint, do I like this content? So we, we narrow it down a little. Um, yep. It might all be great stuff, but we still pick and choose and, and maybe don't quite use all of it every month. Yep. The, key, the key thing I like though is that Personally, we send a personalized two-minute video that we shoot every Monday out to all of our clients and prospect emails from our CRM, and that gets distributed on Tuesday every week. So if I'm doing personal video content on Tuesdays, I don't necessarily want these other uh, calendar items going you know, 10 minutes later. And, and so once we dial in what we like from this calendar, we then like and determine which days it'll get distributed, which would be different than the way this calendar looks on screen. Excellent. Yeah. And I think that's what's, that's what we love about the program is 
so I meet with the team and, you know, there's, we have Samantha Russell and Amy and a lot of marketing thought leaders. And we think about what would be the, you know, what would be great topics for blogs, emails, and social posts in a given month. So, you know, I'm writing the August content in, you know, late June and July. We write the content, we map out what we think would be an ideal calendar, and we send it out. And each of these, um, you can see the titles, the second page of this calendar has the links to all of the um, documents so you can read them. And then everybody in the Do It For Me program has a dedicated marketing specialist and they send any of their edits and changes to that marketing specialist who then once they incorporate this, the changes, which in Corey's case means he's choosing some to opt out of, he's choosing some that he customizes, he's changing words or changing images or adding his own picture. And then he changes maybe some dates. And then the marketing specialist executes everything for him based on his feedback. So super time saver. And it enables him to use some really high-end sophisticated content that reads like something he wrote, but also take that extra step to personalize it. Did right. I say that? Did I say anything incorrectly or is that good? No, I'd, I'd say that's good. And, and, and I'll admit, I am not a paid advertiser of FMG here today. I'm going to tell it like it is. And it legitimately is as easy as us emailing our internal contact person there. And she schedules all this stuff and, and it's done. The other thing I like, and maybe I'm stealing your thunder, Susan, but I mean, if, if I want an, an article on, on fly fishing or something like that, I can submit it and they'll take those requests and they'll do it. Absolutely. I, I am, you know, on text and email at all times. In fact, just yesterday, um, as all of you know, the Fed met and raised rates and we were able to write an email right then and get it out to all of our do it for me customers by the end of the day. I think it went out at three o'clock Pacific so that they could approve or edit it and get it out either later that day or this morning. Um, so tell, tell us about, do you use the timely content? And um, if so, what, what's your thought on just the time savings and you know the value and I guess reception from your clients and prospects when you are able to send something real time? Yeah, I, I like the timely content because if I had to just block out my calendar and write that myself, I could do that. But it's certainly to do it right. I'm kind of a perfectionist. You know, is that gonna take me an hour or two hours? You know, and and then to get it through compliance, um, that's the other nice thing that through the FMG, most of this stuff flows through compliance in a matter of minutes, you know, and, and gets out there easy. So we really like the blog posts. We also like the uh, the timely releases that, that just come out on the fly, so to speak. So super good. Awesome. So now that you've freed up all this time, um, tell us about what your team was able to add to their plates. In a, you know, typically advisors are their time is filled with just doing baseline content, um, but you now have time to do other things. Uh, maybe tell us a little bit about the other things that you've added, like podcasting or this video that you do every month or every week. Yeah, it, it, it's interesting that maybe I just have a different mindset, but but when I hear that two or three percent of advisors have a podcast, I think yeah. I I should be that guy. I sh I should I should be those, <laughs> you know, I should be Actually, in that crowd. I think, I think only 20% in our survey, it was something like 20 to 20 to 30 percent of advisors do blogs. So that's another even opportunity, but tell us about your podcast and how you started. Yeah. And so, so initially this, this concept goes back probably three years. And I thought, all right, uh, you know, I'm going to do this podcast thing. And I thought, I don't want it to be boring. I don't want it to <laughs> be uh, cheap looking, you know? So I did some homework, did some yep. study and, and I'm spending some money, you know, I, I'm paying for a production team, editing the whole nine yards. Uh, and I think if you if you listen to an episode, you're going to think, oh, that, that's pretty cool. You know, and um, it's nice you because have, we can, you typically have guests or are you speaking yourself or is it a mixture? Um, it, it's a mixture. 
but probably two thirds of the episodes, uh, it's myself, and then I have a a co-host, who, you know, who who sounds like a radio DJ, basically. Yeah. But, um, and we try to make it interesting. We try to keep it simple. It's not a sales pitch. It is. It's right. a thirty-minute event, uh, and I, I try to think that when people are done with it, they're they're maybe going to laugh at least once, uh, and maybe. Yeah think rather deeply about something and, and then maybe hopefully take some action. And, and I remind people that they don't have to work with me or my office exclusively. I am legitimately just trying to put good stuff out there to encourage people to understand that having a coach or a financial coach in their life is going to make their results better. Now. Yeah, that is something we, you know, that's completely aligned with our philosophy. And I, 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 I wish I could deliver a hundred leads to every advisor every month. Um, but the reality is the best way to grow your business. I think Corey will reiterate is to give valuable content away for free and to share your knowledge um, freely on a consistent basis across as many channels as possible. And you will naturally grow. They're just isn't a magic bullet. And you can see here the value of content, a couple different stats. 64% of marketers outsource their writing in some way. It is the number one thing that's outsourced for financial advisors. The other thing that is almost always outsourced is website design and um, hosting. Again, I mentioned the 90% of clients. Client communication is absolutely critical. And I would bet that most people do it less then they should, that there's an opportunity to increase that. Timely content is critical. Blogs can make a huge difference, both in SEO, as well as in that thought leadership category of giving away free content. Um, and successful social media, we always hear that advisors are interested in doing more social media and figuring out how to make it actually work for them. And again, the key is really good content. So Corey, tell us what were the what were, what are some of the most recent podcast topics that you've done and or those that have had the most um, listens or you know have been sort of your top top few? Yeah, it, it just so happens that the last two episodes, and we release these every two weeks. So you know we're doing 26 of these a year get released, but the last two was a two-part series um, with a local couple who actually lost a child. Uh, so a sad oh. story, but it resulted in them opening a foundation and it's just blossomed into so much wonderful stuff. And we have had an unbelievable amount of feedback that, that people after they listened to the first episode couldn't wait for the second one. And so it doesn't have to be about finance. This is about being real with real people, you know, and, and just making that connection. And, and to go back a step, um, like you said, consistency. If I'm doing 52 weekly videos to all my clients, even if they don't watch it, they get the email and they see my name. If I'm doing 26 podcasts, you know, we're at 78 touches per year. And that's without any of the blogs, you know, monthly market insights, you know, we're easily touching clients 200 times without me having to put a lot of time into phone calls or personalized letters. You know, and we do that stuff too. But I mean, not many clients are going to leave you if you show them 200 times a year that you're watching. No. And how would you say, um, I know you're growing extraordinarily well. If you were to identify the, the I guess, the attribution um, or what do you think is driving your growth? How would you answer that question? Uh, this, is, this is the old phrase I've, I've shared in-house forever. It's, you know, we do what we say we will do. You know, and that's, you know, we strive to return every call, every email, every day to a client. It might not be the answer they're looking for. It might just be, hey, we got your email, but we're going to tell you tomorrow what the answer is. You know, this is a service industry. You better bring your A-game service and you better communicate. And the referrals will come. The additional uh, share of, of wallet will come. Uh, yep. And it takes hard work. It does. You know? I've done this a long time, but I've also worked hard and worked a lot of hours week after week after week, you know, because it's yes. not work. It's fun. I have fun. You know, so. Exactly. And hopefully um, you've found that right balance of insourcing and outsourcing. Um, 
I also, I wanted to actually switch to Amy. Amy Galley is on the call. Hi, Amy. We need to get you a slide in the beginning. So we introduce you. <laughs> Amy is on my team. We've worked together for a long time and she's going to just uh, jump into the platform and show you some of the things that Corey has touched on, um, starting with that, the timely content. So for example, the email that we wrote yesterday about the Fed raising rates and just how our content um, library works, which really is the foundation of all marketing. All right. Hello, everyone. I have up here our content library. And in here, this is our exclusive collection here. This is for our Do It For Me customers. And I'm going to jump into here. And here is all their emails, their social posts, their email sequences that they can find. Um, so just yesterday, we wrote that email. Let's see. Here we go. Um, let's Let's take a look at this one. I'm gonna go in here and say, use this email and we can preview. And, and as a reminder for do it for me, we email this out and ask them, ask customers like Corey to opt in or out and or make changes. So they don't have to go into the library um, to find anything or send it. We're actually doing that for them. But um, this is how it works for um, customers who are not part of our do it for me. They go in, they'd find the content. And Amy, you can show them how they would execute. Sure. Um, so if I preview that email, you can see it comes on my nice template with my branding and my photo at the bottom. And I decide I want to use that, but maybe you want to edit just a little bit of it to personalize it. So I can come in here and it works just as if you were um, editing a Word document. I can just change, maybe I don't like that first sentence. I want to make um, I want to add something personal. I'm going to make all my touches. And as soon as I get it to how I'd like, I'm going to do schedule email. This is a timely one. So I'd probably send it to all my contacts, but I've also done some segmentation work and created some different groups so that I can get the right message, to the right clients. So if I wanted to do that, I can go in here and see this was just going to go to my A clients or my COI influencers, or I can even just and send I I'll, I'll interject and say, um, Reminder that the FMG platform has bi-directional integrations with all of the main CRM. So Wealthbox and Redtail and Salesforce and Microsoft Dynamics and you name it. So it's as simple as a pushing a button to upload your contacts and tag groups and segments come over and you would see all of the groups that you have in your CRM in this send to groups activities that you do in your FMG platform, like sending out an email the activity is sent back and logged in your CRM. Yes, great point. Um, so once I pick who I wanna go to, I'm gonna do next and I can send this ASAP or I can schedule it for some date in the future. Now, keep in mind, we have the compliance workflow built right into the system. So you saw that I edited that it's gonna go to compliance and then as soon as they approve it, it will go out. But if I wanted to skip that step, it was already pre-approved and I can just send ASAP and it would go right away. So in here, I can see that it's going to all contacts. It's pending compliance approval. And there's this button here that I love as well. This is a timely piece, so I wouldn't make this a template. But if this was a reminder of, a, of your review or something that you might use again and again, you can save this as a template. You're going to name it whatever you'd like. And then um, you become the author of that. So it makes it easy to use pieces again and again. And I will throw out to any, but you know, it's it it was, you know, the, the news broke yesterday. But if anybody would like this email on the webinar, um, just write a comment in the chat and we will get that out to you. Great. Excellent. And just now so you can see up here, yeah, I'll keep going. Sorry. Compliance. No, no, no. I just wanted to show them that, like, now that I did that step, I can always follow that piece through. It'll show me what's with compliance, what's been approved, and what's pending. Excellent. Um, Corey, you mentioned that you've started to use the new client onboarding campaign. Do you want to talk a little bit about that while Amy um, brings it up and, and share how you've personalized it and how you use it? Yeah, I mean, for years, I, I thought it was a good idea to have a, essentially a workflow for, you know, thanking that new client for business, maybe touch and base when their first statement comes in the mail, maybe three months later, you know, and kind of building it into a series. 
And I just never had time to do it. And so then when we subscribed to the do it for me, it was, it was funny because I jumped right out at me as a, as a layup or an easy thing to do. Um, so we've started doing that, you know, so we get a new client today. We have a series that automatically gets set up for that client tied to our Redtail CRM system. So, you know, I think there's five, I think we have five or six emails in our series that will reach out to that client on different days in the future. And it's just going to automatically happen once we have it in the queue. So yep. I don't have to have a staff put eight tasks on my uh, CRM calendar and then follow through with myself or somebody else doing something 181 days from today. Exactly. So, I mean, just another time, time saver in, in that new Huge client. You want to, yeah, I mean, you want to dazzle that new client because they might have come from somewhere else where they weren't happy with the communication. So why wouldn't you, you dial in some of these exactly. and make them feel like a rock star right away in year one? And I always say, I think, you know, the beauty, what I always aim for is one-to-one -one scalable marketing. So emails that come in and feel like they were written just to you are far more powerful than an email that comes in and you can tell that it was written to everybody. But you want both, obviously, when you're sending out something about the market, you're expecting it to go to all clients. But these little one-to-one -one things really resonate. Yeah, Amy, let's go through this slowly. Just... I mean, yeah, for I those of you, that the family can meeting, see, yeah, reading it, you know, it's just, um, yeah, no staying on that preview is good. Okay. Let's go back to that one. Yeah. There's the six month review. I love this one. The family meeting, it sounds really personal. Yeah. If you go to the top, I'll just hit on each of the topics that we wrote on okay. and, um, the days. So we've just taken a stab at writing this and put the days between each email, but it's all editable. So the first one is a really high EQ, you know, welcome to our firm. And again, all of these are editable. So for most customers, they'll, they'll take 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and they'll go through and they'll edit all of these slightly, and then they save it as their own sequence, their new onboarding sequence. And then every time they wanna add a customer, they're just adding an email. Our do it for me uh, team will actually, every month you meet, they, they get your new clients and they add them to this campaign for you. So the first is a welcome. The second kind of surprises them and says, you know, we're thinking about you, wanted to touch base. You, you should be receiving your first statement in the coming week or two, which is kind of a surprise and delight that you're thinking about them. Again, you just push this button the day they closed and you didn't even have to think about this email going out. And it also, um, suggest that they follow you on social media. The next um, goes into, you know, we're a team of um, professionals and it tries to get into more of the, we'd like to work with your CPAs and estate attorneys and any of the other professionals. So it's um, geared towards getting introductions to COIs. Then you've got the six month review. Then we've introduced um, an email that tees up a family meeting. We actually just had an advisor who used this a couple of weeks ago and he had five meetings set up within one day of sending this out. And three of them were with families that he thought had actually ghosted him that weren't even engaged. So he's now meeting with the next generation of five families from one email. Um, so that was pretty great. Then we've got the happy anniversary. So again, just something pretty powerful that saves you time, but also wows um, your clients. Next, Corey, I wanted to talk about you are doing an event this summer, and I know you're working with your Do It For Me specialists to help promote it. Tell us a little bit about the event. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. So in the back of my office building, we have an event room, actually, that you know we can easily host about 20 to 25 people, and then it spills outside to a patio. Um, so this is our second year of doing this particular one, which is called Burgers, Bourbon, and Beer. And it is <laughs> Is it is what it is. We're bringing a food, we're bringing a food truck in, um, have some music, we have some some cocktails, and there's no uh, discussion of work. There's no promotion of anything. This is purely just people being people and having fun, and showing our clients that you know we care, but that we're normal people. Um, you know, I, I'm not a seminar person. I don't really like doing that. I want to do stuff that I enjoy. So if I enjoy burgers from a food truck, we're going to, we're going to do that. And, and so then the question becomes, how do you market these types of events? Well, you know, it's just like everything else we're talking about here. We can automate it. 
we can track our SVPs. You know, we we know who's coming and, and we can personalize them. It's just going to flow and be be great. All right. Well, let's let Amy show. Um, so we again, this is um, functionality in our platform that's available to all premium customers. And then do it for me just takes it an extra step, and they will actually help you execute this. Um, we have a whole bunch of events that are preloaded into the system. Um, really popular ones are the um, mid-year market update and the year-end market update, um, as well as a tax strategy uh, um, presentation. All of those are super sophisticated, data-rich um, presentations. They've been filed with FINRA for those of you that have compliance on the head, and um, they have all the speaker notes. It's like a seminar kit. But what's great is regardless of whether you use one of those or put on your own event, like the bourbon, beer, and barbecue or burgers, um, this event sequence uh, enables you to promote it with an email, automatic email sequence and social sequence, as well as print. So Amy, I'll turn it over to you to show how that works. Sure. So um, as Susan mentioned, we have a bunch of different themes in there that you can pick from. Um, let's look. I, I did put one together to show you here. So I'm going to look at my Shred Day event. Had I picked this, it'll fill in all of your details in here. We've gotten, we've pre-written all the promotions for you, but of course you can go in there and edit. And as Corey, as Corey has his own event here, you can you can have a blank slate and do it all yourself and create your own custom event. But it has all the details. I can change the images, anything like that. And then it gives you this really nice landing page that you can share. This is where um, guests can register for it. They can invite a friend to it. It gives information as to where the event is and all of those things. And then, I will say that's one of the wows that we get feedback from advisors, just the fact that it automatically creates a landing page with a registration link and a form, and the form fill goes right into your inbox on your FMG dashboard. That's that's a huge help and makes you look so professional without having to actually build, you know, a little microsite or landing page. And it's what's so nice too, is it's easily shareable. So if you're doing like a webinar on um, some sort of educational event, your clients can easily share that and invite other people. Um, we have our email sequences. These work similar to just like those other sequences that we showed you. They're all spread out for you. They're all created. And then you can go in and edit any of these as well. We've got the social media. And just as we showed before, you know, based on when your event is, you can change the, the dates in between if you need to shorten that up. And this one also has a printed card that you can send. So once you promote your event, you can also manage all your RSVPs right here, as Susan was mentioning. So in here, I had a halftime report. I decided to come to my own event and invite two people. <laughs> you can download the CSV so you have your full invite list. And then it also shows in your inbox because when they RSVP, there's a little open notes field. So if someone wrote you a note in there, you'll see that in your inbox. So it's a really nice way to promote, manage all the makes it push the easy button on promoting your events. Awesome. Yeah, this is going to be great. And we are um, excited to hear how your bourbon beer and burgers mm -hmm. is going. And I'm assuming you're inviting prospects and clients to that. Yeah, we're 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 inviting A and B type category uh, enjoyable clients uh, and uh, encouraging <laughs> to, to bring a guest or two if they would like as well. But again, not mandatory. It's it, it's for fun and you know we have a good time. That's awesome. Um, we were just brainstorming for our do it for me on our do it for me calendar. One of the other things we always do is do a marketing tip. And just FYI, we were thinking of our next marketing tip and. Uh, this is actually something that I think you'd plan more like the end of September, October, but an idea is to do a um, holiday photo card or holiday card photo shoot, professional photo shoot and pick a, a beautiful location, hire a professional photographer, bring in you know food and drinks and maybe a jumpy for the kids and invite clients as well as friends um, or prospects to come and bring their family and or fur babies and uh, take their photos. Um, 
you send it out to them. It's a great takeaway. It totally creates referable moments, something that they're sending to all of their friends and family. Um, so just an idea that you might want to think about. And um, if you're an FMG client, you can use our event sequence to promote it. Um, excellent. So Amy, um, I think now let's, I know, Corey, you also have an FMG website that is super slick and cool. Um, maybe tell us a little bit about when you refreshed it and, um, you know, any anything that you think would be of value to share with the audience um, in terms of how often do you need to refresh it? Do you need to, you know, go in and keep the content fresh? How do you how do you manage that both leveraging FMG and your own team? Yeah, I, you know, I, I can't stress this too much. I mean, having a good website that looks modern and that gets updated once in a while is super important. You know, yeah. like I said, everybody in this industry can do the same products and services. So you got to set yourself apart. Um, I think we just refreshed ours to kind of a, high, of a higher level upgrade uh, maybe two years ago with FMG. Uh, yep. I'm, I'm super happy with it. I basically gave the theme to the design people at FMG and, and they put it together and it took some work and some edits, but I wanted my stuff to be different than everybody else's, you know, because if you buy the, the entry level package of a website somewhere, it's going to look like an entry level package website. Yep. You, know? <laughs> you get what, you, yeah. I mean, that's, that's very true, actually. I mean, I, I'll be honest. I, you know, we have some, we actually, you know what? I, one thing I will say, we have some beautiful entry level websites. We did a, a webinar last week. I think it was, maybe it was two weeks ago with an advisor and his website is gorgeous. And I, we were actually surprised it was our essential package. Um, so we've really enhanced even the essential, but obviously you get so many more bells and whistles and customizations with the premium. Um, one of which is visual editing. So Amy, maybe it'd be worth showing just how easy it is. Cause I know I am not a techie. If I, when we have a website and I want changes, I'm, I'm emailing Jackie and asking her to make them. But um, with our website tools, when you have an FMG website, you can go in and change anything super easily. So Amy, I'll let you talk as you're typing. Yeah, you know, I mean, you do not have to be a graphic designer or a web developer or anything like that. It really is, if you can use Word, you can edit your website. I just went in there and picked a section. Um, I typed it. You can see your edits as I'm making them. I have some tools here that if I wanted to, if I wanted to bold it, but um, as you can see, you know, it, it's really easy to update the website. Um, I'll just show you, show you a few quick things. Um, you can add a section in here. We have all sorts of widgets that you can add um, video to your website. If I wanted to add a new headline paragraph with, um, with a button here, I can easily do that. It'll give me something to start with that I can then edit in here. Do you know how easy it was to do this, Corey? Do you ever go in and edit? <laughs> I pay that? people to edit. <laughs> yeah, okay, I thought so. no, my, my staff, Before you my could staff. go in there and play with your website, add some videos. <laughs> yeah, it's super, super cool. Um, all right, mindful of time. I think let's flip to Corey's recommendations slide. And um, Corey, if you will bring it home and maybe just summarize the advice you would give to the audience. Yeah, I mean, it took me a lot of years to finally understand this, but marketing is not an expense. The IRS might say it is, but it is not an expense. It is an investment <laughs> in your business. And you've got to spend money to set yourself apart. You know what I mean? And, and by that, I even mean set a budget for your upcoming calendar year so that you know what percentage of your revenue you're going to allocate to marketing costs and then follow through with it because it takes consistency to do that. Now, that being said, be, be wary of your time and understand. So you got to team up with, in my opinion, you team up with places that can, can free up your time and deliver the experience you want to deliver. So, you know, if that's uh, foundational elements so that there's a baseline there and then you can personalize and pile your content on top of that, you know, that totally makes sense to me. And, you know, you want to keep this stuff personal so that it, it looks like it's really you promoting you and your business. And yeah, if you do I, those things, it's it's certainly going to free up your time, and then you can you know do things that you want to do, whether do that's outside of work or do a <laughs> podcast. You know, 
or have an event with bourbon and beer. Um, well, and, yeah, you know, and, it, and it's funny, you know, I laugh. I say, well, it's free up your time and have a work-life balance and all that stuff. You know what happens, at least for me, uh, you get busier and you, you enjoy it. You enjoy the thrill and then you make yourself even busier by taking on more business and doing <laughs> new fun things, whether it's writing a book uh, or, or starting that podcast, you know, both of those I can check off my bucket list now. Excellent. And uh, it's clear that you have mastered. Um, well, no, I don't think you've mastered time management because you just keep adding things to your plate when you create capacity. But that's what, you know, that's what eight players do. Um, I think um, at this point, let's uh, flip through some of the remaining slides. Aim, I'll just sort of summarize. If you are thinking of outsourcing, these are the things that you should expect. Um, first, you should expect it to free up time. We, um, on average, hear that advisors who outsource their marketing and uh, the content, particularly with the Do It For Me program, are freeing up up to 30% of their time. Sometimes it's you know 10 plus hours um, in a given you know two week period. Go to the next. Um, this was really interesting. I just saw this in the 2023 JD Power Advisor Satisfaction Survey. So nearly a third of advisors say that they don't have enough time to spend with clients. That's a bad thing. Um, and net promoter scores, which um, I think everybody's familiar with a measure of advisor satisfaction, those that don't have that 28% that say they don't have enough time, their clients are 30 points less satisfied. So it is critical that you free up time to do the things that are most important and you outsource those things that can be done better and faster with others. Next slide. You also outsource to improve the quality and the results of your marketing, obviously. You know, you're looking for an ROE and an ROI. And as Corey started, I don't even think you knew I had this slide, but you are likely a financial advisor because you um, not you are not a financial advisor because you believe you're a marketing expert. So let those that are passionate and experts keep you ahead of the curve and uh, deliver the results for you. And last, um, it is less expensive than hiring. So Corey is able to do both. Um, but for most advisors, hiring someone is expensive. There's, you know, there's turnover, there's management, there's coaching, there's benefits. It is far less expensive, ultimately, if you're making that decision of do I hire or do I outsource? If you can only do one, outsourcing is going to be less expensive. So with that, I think we'll bring it to a close. If anybody is interested in Learning more about FMG, our Do It For Me program, or has any questions, just uh, either email us at marketing at fmgsuite.com or use this QR code. We're thrilled to have you join us. Um, Corey, thank you so much for your time, which we know is uh, fully double booked, so for squeezing us in. And I hope everybody enjoyed hearing Corey's story and um, got a lot out of the webinar, and we hope to see you again soon. Very good. Thank you.